I've had a love-hate relationship with robot vacuums pretty much since they have existed. I've had five or six different vacuums from various brands and they all seem to fall short until now. It even passes the wife approval factor with the vacuuming and mopping abilities. We are talking about the Eufy X10 Pro Omni. This is a sponsored video and they did send this to me for free. With that out of the way, let's get started. So I'm really excited to make this video today because one of my favorite videos to make are on robot vacuums because when else can you just make a mess on purpose and use a robot to clean up after you and see how well it does. It's just a great concept and I'm gonna have some fun today. For that, we're gonna go over a few features. It has 8,000 pascals of suction, which for a robot vacuum is really impressive. It's got the Mopmaster 2.0 technology. I'll get into more of that later on how it works, but it does have two reverse spinning brushes on the back of it to really scrub any kind of mess away. It's got the AIC feature, which uses cameras and an LED light in the dark to be able to see any items that you may have left around the house, not get tangled up on shoes or cords or anything like that. It's got the base station that will clean your mop, it will dry your mop, it will refill your tank, it will suck the dirt out of the dustbin inside the vacuum. It does everything for you. You just need to attain to the base station once every week or two, depending on how much mess you make and how often you clean. I'm excited to go ahead and test out some more serious spills, if you will, to see how well it does on some stuck on grime and things like that. We also have a pro detangling comb on the vacuum itself to make sure it doesn't get tangled up on any long string or dog hair or human hair for that matter, for example. One thing that is kind of overlooked on some of these vacuums is how high the mop will raise. And in this case, it is 12 millimeters when it hits carpet. I do have long pile carpet, so we will see just how well it does to get away from the carpet when you're doing a mop and vacuum mode and you have a wet mop, you obviously don't wanna get your carpet wet. Everything was packaged nicely, no issues in shipping. Looking at the vacuum itself, we've got the detangling roller brush, the four click sensors, so it doesn't fall off your stairs, for example. We've got the edge brush and the pentagon shaped mop pads to minimize the gap between the mops as they rotate for greater coverage. Opening up the base station was pretty simple. We just had to attach the little ramp. We've got a clean water tank and a dirty water tank. Take out the sticker for the AIC so the cameras can see where it's going out these little bumpers and place the base station where it goes with ample space on either side of it. Fill up the fresh water tank with fresh water and we are ready to go. So when you first set up the RoboVac in the app, it will do a quick scan of the whole floor of your house. Really quickly, it will bounce around each room. Whenever it, wherever it finds an opening, it will go over there, turn around and scan the whole area without having to do a full clean like other brands have to do. It will just bounce around until it finds all the walls and then return to the base station you can build your map, split up your rooms like I have here. You can name your rooms. You can set up no-go zones, no mop zones, things like that. We also can set up schedules if we go into settings and want set up schedules. I've got two schedules set up here. One that works Monday, Wednesday, Friday that will clean the entire house, just vacuum, and then Tuesday and Thursday, it will vacuum and mop the hard surfaces. And then everything else we can manually do under these, these scenarios. So what we'll do is we'll enter the RoboVac, we'll do a customized mode real quick, and we will do a standard clean of vacuum and mop and a standard suction with medium water level. And go ahead and click start. With this icon, you can see that it is currently washing the mop. It's getting it wet and it is getting it ready to mop. So now it's time to have a little bit of fun. I walked around outside in the mud. Luckily it had just rained. I brought my Crocs back inside, walked around on the square pounded them on the floor and rubbed it in with my hand, sent the robot on a mop only mode in this square. And after the first pass, did a pretty good job, but didn't quite get all of it up. So after sending it back to the base station to wash the mop pad and cleaning up one more time, as you can see, it is completely spotless, 100% clean. One of the biggest factors in getting it so clean is the fact that it has one kilogram of downward force from the vacuum. It's just like putting that much force with your hands scrubbing the floor. Now what you're watching here is called the edge hugging clean which does a little twisting motion and allows you to clean right up against your baseboards. Just keep in mind this will cause the vacuuming and mopping cycle to take a little bit longer as you would expect. We of course had to get the kids involved to make a mess on purpose here and test out some of the vacuuming abilities. We've got some dog food as well as pencil shavings. 
as you can see here, we've got Allie with the assist on that piece of dog food. So we won't count that one, but does a very good job considering the amount of pencil shavings that were there. I went ahead and took the pieces of tape up and sent the vacuum right back for one more pass. Added the mop feature just to get all the little tiny pieces in between the cracks up with the mop. Unfortunately, my SD card ran out of storage right about here, but I can assure you that it cleaned up perfectly with the mop and vacuum function after that. Next, I wanted to test the AIC feature with which uses the cameras in front to avoid any obstacles it may see, this case being a shoe with an untied shoelace and that power cord. It does an amazing job. It sees the shoe, it goes right around, it gets nice and close, but not too close to where it will get tangled up. Same with the power cord. And then for the remainder of the clean, it knows where it's at, so it will completely avoid that area. It will finish the area clean and return to the base station. Now, this is all done securely and locally on the vacuum itself. It is not using any outside connectivity to UFI servers, for example. But if you do want to have another feature that is turned off by default in the app, you can turn on real obstacle photos, which will actually show you an image of what the camera is seeing and what it's avoiding. This is turned off by default because it has to process that image with UFI servers and send it back down to you. So if that is a concern for you, just keep the setting turned off. I will say, however, UFI does everything they possibly can to protect your privacy. They'll encrypt the photo that they do have to send to the servers. And they do everything that you can see here in the privacy policy for the real obstacle photo. I'm not going to go over everything here, but pause the screen and read this. You can see that they're doing everything they can to protect your privacy. Everything else is processed locally. So after going over the features again, it really does show that this is the best robot vacuum under $1,000. Not just because of the feature set, but because of how each of the features work. They work extremely well. The vacuum is amazing. The mopping is second to none. It never gets stuck. It never gets tangled. It does its own thing. You only have to check on the base station once every, or once or twice a week, depending on how often you clean. It is just the best robot vacuum I've ever used and the best value you'll be able to find out there. Links will be in the description below if you want to pick one up, and any discounts that are currently available will also be down there. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.